Hi there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new intelligent printer settings in QImage Ultimate. When you first open QImage Ultimate, you're presented with the thumbnails on the left and your printed page or the live view on the right. Now I could open up folders here by clicking on this bar and scroll to a folder that I want to use and select that folder and get my images displayed in the thumbnail grid. Then I could click either on the plus button if I want a 5 by 7 print because that's just what QImage Ultimate opened to. That was the last size used. Or I could click on the choose size button here and just choose a 5 by 7 and start working. Now if you hold your mouse over the print on the page you get some information about the print. If you hold your mouse over the paper you get information about the printer and the paper setup down on the bottom. So that allows you to see your setup without actually having to go to the settings tab. But typically the first thing we want to do is set up our settings for our printer and our paper. This little asterisk right here tells us that there's something that needs to be done here. So I'm going to click on the settings tab and the printer that comes up is actually the one that I want to use but you can drop this down and see all the Windows installed printers and select the one that you want and then you can drop down the media type and choose the type of media that you're using. I have a pack of semi-gloss paper so I'm going to choose that semi-gloss and the default size is actually what I want but again you can see all of the options that the driver supports just by dropping this down. If you have 13 by 19 you could select that and so on. So I'm just working my way down from the top and verifying all these settings as I go. I've got the printer, the media type, and now the media size. The paper source for this printer is just rear tray. That's the only option it has, so that's fine. Portrait orientation for the paper is also fine. Now I get down to printer profile, and I know that there are some printer profiles that were installed with the driver. So I'm going to drop this down and do choose new profile. When I do that, I get a dialog that's basically showing me the standard profile here that QImage Ultimate uses if you don't select one. But this little button right here says Browse for ICC Profiles, so that's what I want to click. And when I click that, it'll bring up all of the profiles in the System Color folder, and I'm just scrolling down looking for Canon Pro 100. And there we have some Canon Pro 100 papers. And I'm looking for semi-gloss because that's the media type that I chose and I see two semi-glosses here and I'm going to pick this top one because that indicates that this is for quality one and two and I want the best quality so I'm going to select that profile and click open. Now the profile that I chose is listed in the box here and I like to use relative calorimetric rendering intent and black point compensation on so that all looks fine and I'm going to click OK. Once I do that you'll see the printer profile chosen here for the same paper type that I selected up here in media type and quality one or two. That's what this means for a, a Canon profile. Now the thing that draws our attention here is this little properties button that has a warning symbol on it. It says driver properties have not been verified and you need to click this button to set print quality, color management, and other settings in the driver. And this button is also used to access the maintenance like uh, nozzle checks and um, cleaning cycles and things like that. So I'm going to click the properties button and when I click that I get some instructions here on the left and the driver on the right. Now these instructions are tailored to the settings that you made up here. The top paragraph just explains that you are verifying driver settings as a user and you need to do manual verification by going through the driver. And it says you've selected a printer profile to be used with a Canon printer. And based on that, here are the instructions. You have five steps here. We'll start with step number one. It says on the main tab under print quality. So I'll click the main tab and here's print quality click custom and then set. So 
Customs already clicked, and I'll click Set. Now it says Set Print Quality Slider to match the profile. And this 1 or 2 here is a 1 or 2 quality. I'm going to slide it all the way over to 1 because I want the finest quality. So now I've done this, and I'm done with Step 1. Number 2 says on the main tab, which I'm already on, use the option below that applies to your printer model. So you'll either be using this top line or the one underneath it, depending on the model printer. The drivers are a little bit different. So I'll start with this one. It says under color and intensity. So I see that, so I'm going to be using this option. Click manual and then set. Okay, manual's already chosen. I'll click set. And I don't have to use this second option because that would be for different Canon models, such as a Pro 4000 or one of the wider format printers. So I'm going to move on to step three. It says open the matching tab. Okay, matching. Then it says select none from the list. Okay, none is already selected, so that's fine. And then it says click OK on each dialog to accept the changes. So I'm going to click OK here and then OK on the final driver window. And it closes both of these and the instructions and the driver. And now you'll notice that the button says driver properties have been verified. So you've gone in based on these settings with the instructions and you've verified the driver settings for this printer and paper. Now at this point, if we go back to the Live View tab, we'll notice if we scroll over the empty paper here, it'll tell you that you've got a Canon Pro 100 series printer selected. It'll show you the paper type and size. And down where it says Printer Driver, it'll say Verified. At that point, you know you're ready to print. And you'll also notice that the little asterisk on the Settings tab is gone because it knows that you're working with verified settings. So this is a good way to work through the driver settings and get instructions on exactly how to set the driver based on the settings that you've chosen up top. Now, not only does it allow you to get instructions and be able to set your printer the way it should be set based on the options that you've selected, but if I go over to, let's say, the Epson 9900, I haven't created a verified setup for that printer yet, so we would have to go through those same steps and set it up for the type of paper we're using. And here on the paper source, we have different options for that, and so on. But when we come back to the printer that we did verify, which is the Pro 100, I'll select that printer. Whenever you select that printer with this printer selection dialog, this drop down, it automatically brings back all the verified settings that you made, including the settings inside the driver, such as print quality and color management. So it brought back the paper type that I used the last time and so on. And now I'm ready to print just by selecting that printer. So that's a great option to have if you have multiple printers. But we go one step further than that in that we can select a media type that's different. Let's say I have some luster paper. Now I'll select luster paper, and I'll see that I need to do the setup for luster paper similar to the semi-gloss and verify it before that will show as verified. But if I go back to the paper that I did verify, which is the semi-gloss, and I select that paper, it automatically brings back all of the settings, including the driver settings and the profile for that paper. So even if you only have one printer, but you use multiple papers, you can have verified settings for every paper in this list, and you only have to create them once. Then when you go back and select that paper, it will automatically bring back all the settings so you don't have to go into the driver each time and follow those instructions. Now keep in mind if I had two different semi-gloss papers, maybe I have a Canon semi-gloss and I have a Staples semi-gloss paper. If you have more than one, it will bring back the last settings that you used when you drop down and select the media type. But if you have more than one, what you can do is click this button here and save the current printer settings, and that will save all of these options here, including the profile and the driver settings. And you can give it a name like Staples Semi-Gloss or Canon Semi-Gloss. And then once you've done that, 
rather than selecting the paper off the list, which you know you have multiple setups for, you can just click this button to recall the settings and load whatever you named it, staple semi-gloss, and it'll fill in and populate all these. So that's the way you can use the new intelligent printer settings to basically just set up the driver once for each printer and or paper type and have them load back automatically. Now keep in mind that if you have any saved printer setups from old versions, you could click here and recall a printer setup for let's say the R1900 and I'll open that. When I load that it automatically says that the driver properties have been verified and that's because if you have old saved printer setups it assumes that you've already gone through and verified settings in the driver so they'll load automatically as being verified. And once again I'm on the R1900 now if I go back to the Pro 100 it'll just bring back that semi-gloss with all the the settings that I made for that printer. The last time I used the printer, that'll come up. Now, one other thing to remember here, or to be aware of, in this version, we have a new feature that when you go to recall some of your old setups that you may have saved, there's a new button down here, a new radio button, that says, show setups for all printers, which is the default, where I could click current printer only. And now it's only showing me the printer setups for the printer that I selected over here, which is the Canon Pro 100. So this little feature right here will allow you to quickly weed out all of the printer settings that you're not interested in. Just select the printer that you want first, and then come here and click on current printer only, and you'll see the printer setups that are applicable to that printer that you have selected back here. And again, on the live view, we can come to the live view. And if we're on the live view, we can just hover over empty space on the paper and we can get this information down at the bottom that shows you the printer and media setup so that you don't have to click on the settings tab to see it. If you start QImage Ultimate with the live view as the default, then you can just hover over empty space on the page and see your current settings. Another feature to be aware of is that if you're on the settings tab and let's say you've done some stuff in here, you're finished with it now, and I decide to add another 5x7 of this print, whenever I add an image from the thumbnails, like if I click the plus here, it'll automatically switch back to the live view for you so you can see what you're doing. In addition, we have the option for QImage Ultimate to start either on the live view or it can start up with the default on the settings tab. So you can see your settings when you start up first and then just start adding images and it'll switch to the live view for you. And that's done up here under Edit, Preferences, when QImage Ultimate starts. You can select Show the Live View tab or Show the Settings tab when it starts up. So that's your choice. So I hope this video helps you to use the new intelligent printer settings. Keep in mind, we used to have a printer setup button that just opened the driver up here in older versions. And we also had a file printer and page setup that's now gone because you don't need those. Everything and more from that dialog that used to pop up when you click the main printer setup button is right here. You can select the printer, media type, media size, and all these options. And this properties button right here, even if it's already marked as verified, you can go in and verify it again. You can re-verify it. This properties button simply opens your driver. If you need to go into the driver to select borderless or to go to the maintenance tab and do a nozzle check or something like that, it's always available. It's right here on the main screen rather than on a sub dialog. So thanks for watching the video and hope you enjoy the new features.